Our project documents the current protests that have erupted in response to the murder of Masha Amini by Iranian police. Our specific lens is that of Iranian Americans who protested this abuse in Boston, Massachusetts. They brought the stories of those impacted by the brutal enforcement of the harsh legal codes by Iranian police. However, oftentimes in history, we have observed that events repeat, and this is of course not the first time protests have happened in response to the legal codes created by the current ruler in Iran. To better understand when the protests in this form of legal code was created, it is best to go back to the transition of power from the Shah to that of the supreme leader, which is heavily influenced by the Ayatollah. Thus, as observed in Persepolis, the Shah took power in 1925, and he was happy to take advantage of the position and supply oil to Western countries. It is implied that he cared about Iran and did his best to modernize. Yet when his son took power in 1941, he did not say share the same level of care that his father did, and many Iranians called for his removal. However, when he was removed from power, he was replaced with a supreme ruler that was heavily influenced by the Islamic fundamentalist group, the Ayatollah. The Ayatollah reformed Iran, shifting to enforcement of the head recoverings and further restrictions on individual freedoms. These reformations that limit individual freedoms are still in effect and are the main reason for the protests and are the common aggressor in the stories we will discover. Masha Amini was a 22-year-old woman who was arrested by the morality police in Tehran for not wearing her hijab correctly. She was assaulted by the officials and sent to detention, where she was beaten into a coma and later died. This tragedy clearly shows the abuse of power by the Iranian government, who still fails to take accountability. He insisted that she died from a heart attack, but reports have indicated that she died from a skull fracture to the head. Massive protests have erupted all over the country because of this, and more deaths have accumulated, but no one is sure of how many people have died because of Iran's internet censorship to the rest of the world. In the protests, women have burned their hijabs and cut their hair in public as a symbol to show their anger anger towards the morality police's unjust laws. Protesters everywhere have been demanding accountability from the Iranian government, as well as an end to the oppression of women's basic human rights. Protesters are sacrificing their lives to protect their rights and fight for justice in and out of Iran. Family members of protesters are not even safe as they have been interrogated by the morality police. These violations are protected within legislation and policy because of a broken system based upon a long history of lack of inclusivity. It is being recognized by the rest of the world that the Iranian government is silencing the that the deaths and voices of their people, with Boston University's Iranian students protesting. Through this, we observe international solidarity among those who understand and have experienced these injustices. Neda Aga Sultan, a 26-year-old daughter, sister, and friend who studied Islamic philosophy and loved music and traveling, was shot dead on June 20, 2009, outside of an anti-government protest. On June 20, 2009, demonstrations were occurring in Tehran, protesting the voting fraud in the re-election of the president. In his weekly sermon, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei stated that the protesters would be held accountable for any violence that occurred. Aga Sultan's parents had even warned her not to go to the protest, telling her that it was too dangerous. But she went anyway, wanting freedom, freedom for freedom for everybody, as her fiance Caspian Makin stated. Aga Sultan and her music teacher were stuck in traffic on their way to the protest. They got out of the car to get some fresh air since the car was hot. The bullet hit her in the chest and she collapsed without her throwing a rock or anything. They shot her, said Aga Sultan's music teacher. A nearby doctor attempted to help stem the bleeding as the driver and Aga Sultan's music teacher tried to get her to a hospital, but she died before they arrived at the emergency room. Video of her murder spread across Iran, generating outrage in many Iranians. Mehdi Karubi and Iranian Shia cleric and reformist politician stated that Neda Aga Sultan, a young girl who did not have a weapon in her soft hands or a grenade in her pocket, became a victim of thugs who are supported by a horrifying intelligence apparatus. Aga Sultan became a symbol of the anti-government protests, becoming known as the Voice of Iran, since her name in Persian means voice. Aware of this, the Iranian government prohibited Aga Sultan's family from holding a public memorial service, forcing them to bury her immediately and ordering them to take down their black mourning banners. 
The Iranian government resorted to threats and counter accusations in order to avoid responsibility for Aga Sultan's death. Iranian authorities denied that the Tehran police was using lethal force to break up the protest, placing the blame for Aga Sultan's death on a on an opposition group, the People's Mojahedin Organization of Iran, a group who advocates for overthrowing the government of the Islamic Republic of Iran. However, witnesses to Aga Sultan's death stated that her shooter was a pl- plains clothes security official or militia man. Some witnesses even overheard a member of the Basij mil- militia exclaiming, I did not mean to kill her, but he was never charged for her death. The Iranian authorities made Aga Sultan's family and friends deny on television that the government was responsible for her death, and most of her friends and family were afraid of what would happen if they spoke out loud about Aga Sultan's death. Neda Aga Sultan's death was just one of over 70 that occurred during these anti-government protests, and only for one of these deaths were officials tried in court. For years, the Iranian government has used their power and threats to avoid responsibility for the innocent deaths that they have caused. And Neda Aga Sultan's death is only one example of this. The Vidov Kari was executed by the Iranian government despite the outcries across the world for leniency. Navid was a 27-year-old Iranian wrestler. He attended and was in support of the 2018 Iranian protests. The 2018 protests were held to speak out against the economic policies of the government, but soon spread towards anti-government messages. Navid and his two brothers were accused of and convicted for the murder of a security guard during the protest. They confessed the crime, but it was later made clear they'd been physically and mentally pressured to do so. The evidence presented against them was CCTV footage of Naveed being near the crime scene. However, no video footage of him actually committing the crime. Furthermore, eyewitnesses originally testifying against Naveed later said they had either been pressured to testify, told false recounts of the events, or straight out had never seen Naveed before. The three brothers were tried, one receiving 54 years, another 27 years, and Naveed was sentenced to execution. All around the world, people were pleading with the Iranian government to spare Naveed, However, they were unsuccessful, and he was executed in September of 2020. Protest, a statement or action expressing disapproval of or objection to something. Freedom of speech is one of the fundamental rights of all humankind. Often taken for granted is the ability to speak our minds and tell our stories. Ozan Guzelze used his art to spark a conversation and remind people of their right to freedom of speech. He shines a light on the experiences the women shown in the photo are trying to tell people. Ozan Guzelze argues through this photo that the abuse of power in Iran stems from the heightened enforcement of the fundamentalist Islam legal code that does not protect women's fundamental rights in Iran. He does this by showing the solidarity of those who understand and most likely have experienced these injustices. Even though these stories are all distinct in their own ways, we can learn through this image that differences should not cause division, but instead foster unity. These stories inspired a group of people to to unite, to spread awareness about the current events in Iran, even though they could have caused harm to their relatives. This solidarity is one of the most powerful tools in a feminist toolkit. Producing this project was a challenging task. We had to ask ourselves some critical questions, which often led to more questions. However, this is what it takes to change our subject position to better understand and support others. Above all, we would like to emphasize the important stories of Neda Aga Sultan, Masa Amini, and Naveed Afkari.